Great. Thanks very much uh, for everyone joining me this afternoon for this session, which is about bringing automation to web app hosting and deployment. My name is James Bezik. I'm a developer advocate for the AWS serverless team. And I've been a serverless geek for a couple of years, so I'm really into tools that just make it very easy for developers to solve difficult problems easily. Uh, prior to being a DA, I was a product manager for quite a few years in software, and then before that, a software developer for more years than I remember. And before AWS, I worked at multiple different startups and for larger companies like Rackspace. And actually, I've been an AWS customer since 2012, long, long before I worked here. So I've worked with the different tools that AWS has, cloud and non-cloud as well. So the topics for today I want to cover are about the difficulty of manually deploying websites. Many of us still have to do this, even for working on other projects. Websites seem to be coming up all the time. And this includes things like basic static sites, um, spa-based websites such as React or Vue or other complex websites. And I'm going to walk through what you have to do to manually do that, and then show you some of the tools that we have now that help you automate this and really make it a lot easier. Now, this is a very short deck, but most of the, the presentation will then be a demo of these tools. And I'm going to do everything live in front of you, so we hope the DNS gods are going to work in our favor and deploy everything in time, but we'll see. And once the demo starts, feel free to ask any questions you like. I'll be going through it fa fairly quickly, so if anything is uh, confusing or not clear, just, just ask a question. So if you manually deploy websites, you're probably used to dealing with this sort of process. First, you have to package up all of your HTML and your assets and put them to some sort of object store like S3. And then you go and configure the permissions on that bucket. And then you've got, maybe you have a CDN in front of that, so you have to go and make sure that the origins point to the right place and make sure your DNS settings are set up. And if there, maybe there's a domain name on top of that. And you have to make sure that's pointing to the right place. And then there's various timing delays and all of this, and you cross your fingers and hope that everything's OK. And then for that process, there's a number of different things that can really go wrong. And most of these actually come from personal experience and the websites I've deployed over the years. But one is, after you get to versions 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it, and you're doing this manually, it's very easy to copy the wrong files and just find you've just got the wrong website, or the copy operation was incomplete, and you copied some files and not others, so that now part of the website's correct and others not. Or you just didn't set the permissions correctly, so pages start to 404, but in a non-obvious way, because the cache last time you deployed, you forgot to bust, so the page is serving some people, but not others. And then there's the DNS settings, which, as developers, we all have come to know are very difficult to get right all the time. Timing working against you with DNS in different places. And then if, if you've made a mistake with this sort of static deployment, then how do you roll back? Because chances are, if you're lucky and you have an old version of your website, actually uploading that to your S3 bucket is largely the same sort of deployment again. It's not really a deployment at all. So you have all of these problems that you can make the same mistakes twice if you're lucky. Now, if you're using a single page application framework like uh, React or Vue or Angular, you have most of this same process in place, but now you also have a build process at the beginning. You've got your NPM run that has to be done as well. And so that sits at the beginning of this process that you build your distribution folder and then copy it in much the same way. So this itself has a slightly different set of problems. And again, these do come from personal experience. Um, Forgetting to run the build, done that, and copied the wrong distro file, breaks the site completely. Then because you've got JavaScript files, there's a slight issue of did you copy the maps or didn't you? What did you decide the last time? Because if you get that out of sync, that can create odd behavior. And then CDNs are your friend here, because if you have a very busy website, you might find that you get a race condition where as visitors are arriving, they get some files from the old site and some from the new. And that's a very hard problem to notice and do anything about. And if you are doing anything with back-end changes, and I think this is actually something that's becoming more common for people, it's really hard to synchronize those sorts of changes with this kind of deployment. Because what you tend to do is package up those back-end changes separately and deploy them kind of at the same time as the front-end, maybe at midnight one day when it's quiet. And you just hope you get the timing sort of right. 
And there's not really a great solution when you're doing it manually. So we need a better way. And if I were coming up with a better web app deployment process, these are some of the things I would be wanting it to do. So I want this process to copy the files for me. I'm really bad at these sort of manual operations. I want it to be copied, and I want to know it happens successfully. I also want this process to handle all the permissions. I, if I have to use chmod in my life one more time, I don't need that. I just want this to be an automatic process where I know it's going to be right. Yeah, I really do want that CDN setup. So as much as I love CloudFront, it's something where I don't need to understand really how it works for this sort of process. I just need it to be there. And when changes go through, I'd like the invalidation to happen so that it's it's for sure, I'm making sure that when people arrive, they're looking at either the new version or the old version. The DNS, yes, that's another thing I, I don't want to be touching. All I really want to do is tell this, this mechanism that we're building that here's my website, please just make it work. Domain names and SSL certificates are fun as well. So I don't know how many people in this room have dealt with a website where you've accidentally left the SSL certificate and it's expired without you noticing. Um, I've done this a few times. I won't ask people to raise hands, so um, we can share our shame silently. But it's easy to let these sorts of things just expire and not notice. So there's no value for developers managing this manually, so let's have something that automates that renewal process. And also, I have a lot of stakeholders, typically, who want to see new features that I'm not ready to show for the public. So I'd like a feature where I can deploy this, and it's just a simple username password feature where certain users can get into a site and see a new version, and then when it's ready for publication, we can publish it as usual. And I'm not done yet. I've got more requests. So I'd also like this process to build my code. So no more npm run build or any of that stuff. I want it just to happen, because I'm bound to forget doing this at some point. So this system should auto-detect that I'm using Vue.js or React and should know how to handle that for me. I really like the idea of just taking my front-end code and pushing it to my favorite repository provider, GitHub, GitLab, CodeCommit, Bitbucket, whichever one I choose. And this process should know that I've got a couple of developers in my team, and they put all their pull requests in. And when I approve them, when I do the commit, I want it to know that happened and trigger the build off the commit. I really don't need an extra step of committing and then doing the build. And in fact, you can, def you can, you can decide with this system how to have changes at multiple levels so that if I have a, a prod and dev website, it should understand that too, because I'd really like to have two separate domain names so that potentially I have things like feature branch deployments and CI-CD pipelines in place. So if I have a really clever setup, which I think lots of developers want to get to now, where you've got a dev pipeline that shows your internal users one version of your site, and you've got a prod pipeline that shows it to the world. We could configure this in this tool, so that becomes an automatic tool, too. Um, now, that backup problem, still an issue. So if I make a mistake, which is still possible because not all the mistakes in the world are technical, it's possible with a website to have the wrong content, or there's just some business case that's not right, and we release something a bit too soon, or something along those lines. I need to know, once I've pushed this out into production, that I could rewind back to any previous build. So not just the last one, but what if we made a mistake three builds ago and we want to just go back to that version? I want to be able to essentially just rewind time and make sure the site is now in exactly the right state as it was then. And finally, feature branch deployments. Let's not always deploy from master. Let's make it smart enough so that we can deploy from any sort of feature branching we're doing inside of our repo. Now, the good news is that this isn't an imaginary thing. As I'm sure you've guessed, we've, we've actually got this product. And it's called AWS Amplify Console. Now, this has got a few interesting features for us. Firstly, we can deploy straight from the version control system. So this is those systems I talked about, GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, and CodeCommit. You choose whichever one you want to work with, and it will connect to that. So you literally do git push, and it will do the rest. Now, this means you have instant depl atomic deploys. So in the way this works behind the scenes is that it's using CloudFront and S3 for you, 
And when you do a new deployment, it's creating a new S3 bucket and a new CloudFront distribution. And only when the deployment is completely correct does it then point the domain from one to the other. So you're not actually deploying into the same buckets and the same distributions. You're cutting over from one to the other. And this means if something fails in the build, which I'll show you later, um, a failing build, we're not accidentally just pushing out something where we've broken the old site. If you use Amplify, which uh, is a fairly new framework that lets you build back-end serverless components inside your front-end apps with React and Vue, you can actually integrate it with this too. And this is fairly neat. So if you're a developer and you want to have a DynamoDB table or an API gateway or some sort of back-end component that you specified in Amplify, and between version 1 and version 2, you've changed that configuration, when you do your git push, it'll also synchronize the back end. So again, you're atomically pushing out the back end and the front end at the same time. The build process I'm going to show you today is with the default scripts that come with Amplify. And it chooses sensible defaults. But you also have the ability to get very granular with, with how the deployment works. So I'll show you some of the build scripts and where those can be changed. And finally, there's global availability with this. So Often when we're deploying websites, we're not thinking about users that we have all over the world. And typically, if you deploy a website, what happens is that the website gets slower and slower as the geogra geographical distance between your users gets larger and larger. Because this mechanism deploys through CloudFront, you can deploy these applications here. And whether your users are in Australia or the United States or England or Germany, it makes no difference. They have broadly the same sorts of latency because it's served over a CDN. I've put this uh, full stack example link because on this website, I'll, I'll show you one of these in just a moment, there's a bunch of pre-canned applications where you can literally deploy with one click to see how this works. It's got all the usual examples, the to-do lists and chat applications and things, but it's a great way just to see it in action from a single click. And just on the global deployment point, it's worth mentioning that CloudFront has edge locations all over the world. So AWS has 22 regions globally, but it has many more edge locations for CloudFront. So when you deploy this way, these are all the different places where your website's being deployed to. Obviously, if your users are in somewhere that's very far from these points, the latency is slightly higher. But most of these points are in places where population centers and where users typically are based. So that's the deck. Let's take a quick look at how this works. Now, the rest of this is going to be all demos and code. So if anything is unclear, please raise a hand, and I'll be happy to stop and answer anybody's questions. So what I'm going to do first, I'm using Cloud9, which um, I don't know if anybody here is familiar with. Essentially, it's an IDE in the cloud, so we can just build things on the fly. Now, the thing I wanted to start with first was how you would do this manually, just to show how painful this is. So let's have a quick look at doing it manually. So I'm going to change my, here, I'm going to create a bucket for a deployment. I'm going to call it jbezic go to Berlin. I'll put the bucket in Frankfurt. OK, and then we've got this bucket, so just filter here. OK, let's take this HTML. And then copy it into the S3 bucket. This is the point where I forget the bucket name I used already. Jbezic go to Berlin. OK, if we go back to this, we should have an index.html file there. And if I then make this public, which actually I can't do because it's an AWS account, but typically you would make this object public. And then if you go to this URL here, this would be your website. This is a very bad way to do this, and so don't do this, please. So typically, public buckets are not great. Um, all sorts of things can go wrong. You accidentally put the wrong content in there. It's not a cost-effective way to serve websites. You lose a lot of control. So at this point, you would actually want this to be a private file if you were doing this manually. And then you would go into CloudFront. And 
and we've created a distribution. So I'll find my bucket name. There we go, just there. Now, a good practice is to restrict the bucket access so it doesn't have public access. We allow only the cloud distribution service to uh, connect to the bucket, and we'll have it update the bucket po policy to enforce that. We will do a redirection from HTTP to HTTPS. What about these de defaults? What do you think? Depends on your website. But again, these are all levers you have to think about with manual deployment. Any SSL set up there, it's all kind of complicated, and then we create the distribution. Now, at this point, what happens manually is that we've got this long domain name, and it takes about 20 minutes or so often to publish this out. And then we've got to go into Route 53, hook up the actual domain name we want, point it to this, and cross our fingers that everything, hopes, uh, everything works. I've, I've actually done this many, many times, and I still find manually it's possible to make mistakes. So that's the manual process. Now, what does it look like with Amplify? So let's go back to this. I'm going to go back to a clean IDE. So first things first, I'm going to create a, a new uh, folder. And a new index.html. So I really like the idea of starting at the hello world just to show how easy this is. So this HTML probably doesn't need much explanation. OK, so we've now got, a, we've got our code base now of our website ready and complete. The next phase is to go to Amplify Console. So let's go to this. And we're going to connect an app. So the very first step in this is to take our code and connect it. Now, it currently isn't in a repo. So let's put it in a repo so that we can connect to it. Now, I'm going to use code commit just because it connects with Cloud9 automatically, and it makes it very easy to do this. So I'm going to call this repo go to Berlin. And I'll clone the URL. Oops, wrong one. OK, so let's now make sure that we've got a Git repo ready to go. Oops. And I'm going to commit the file. First commit. Great. And then I'm going to push this up to code commit. So now if I go back to code commit and I refresh this page, we can got my huge website. Yeah, it's only one file, but, but you can see where this is going. So back in Amplify Console, we've now got a Git repo ready. So I'm ready to deploy this and say, I want to connect to code commit. I want to connect go to Berlin, branch master, and go. I'm going to accept all the defaults for now and just save and deploy. And we're just going to wait for a couple of minutes. Now, what this is doing in the background is it's connecting to that repo, cloning it into a Docker container that is managed by Amplify Console, running any build scripts it finds, setting up a CloudFront distribution, S3 buckets, all the things that we were doing manually, it's just doing that all for us. Now, in the UI, it's showing us this step as it's going step at a time. So the provisioning piece is the part where it sets up the Docker container first. That should be fairly fast. And then the build process, this will be very quick for this, given it's, there's no build at all, really. Uh, the deployment piece follows, and then we can verify. So at this point, we know that this is going to be deployed to this URL. And in a few seconds or a few, couple of minutes, this will then be ready. Now, while that's going on, there's a couple of other things I can show you 
that um, I can do. I can set up an email notification so that when it's ready, it will drop me an email. Always useful to have. Any environmental variables I have, I can put in here if I'm using, um, want to provide database connections or anything along those lines. I can also set up access control settings here. So if I've got a team where I'm sharing an AWS account, I don't necessarily want them to be able to do all the same things. I'd like them to commit straight into the Git repo so I have control over how this works. So I can define that there as well. OK, and now this deployment is ready. So if I just click this link, this is my new content. So this is my Hello World example. So really, just with a few clicks and no manual deployment at all, we've taken my website, my index.html, pushed it to code commit, and had that rolled out into the real world. Now that's really interesting, but what if I want to change the website? So if I go back to this, and I want to introduce a version 2, all I do is I make my changes here. Git realizes there's a, there's a change. I can add that here, do another commit. And push. Now, going back to Amplify, you can see automatically what's happened is it's detected there's been a change to the repo, and it started a second build. So at this point, it's now provisioning a second Docker container to do the next build. Now, in the meantime, the first version is still available. You can see that that's still working as you would expect. But it will now only uh, deploy and switch over the website when it successfully builds and realizes the site's OK. Now, while that's working, I wanted to show you domain management. Yes? So uh, basically, in the build scripts, if you're using something like NPM, it'll check for errors. This is not really much that can go wrong. It'll check to make sure files are copied, to send, you know, copied properly. And it, it hashes the file changes. So if there's a problem, it notices there. But typically, it's looking for errors in the, in the build logs. I'm sorry? Yes, so the question is, can it run tests? Yes, it can. Actually, that's a good question. Let me just show you where that works. So in your build script here, this is where you would specify any tests and additional, additional things you want to, you want to run. So it'll, if you're using this in NPM, actually, you don't really need to do anything, because it's going to run NPM run build. So any tests you have hooked up there, if they fail, the build will fail, and it'll pick it up there. OK, so let's just see what happened with that. It's now finished this second build, so let's open that up. And here is my new content version 2. Now, it's not very exciting with just an index file, but if you imagine this being a site with CSS and JavaScript files that could have gotten out of sync, we've, we've solved that problem, because we're actually looking at a different distribution at this point. So what about something a bit more complicated? Let's have a look at running a SPA app. So for this, let's clear all this away. And I'm going to create a new one, my spa app. And I'll just use, for anybody who's a Vue developer here, you're probably familiar with this. You can create a vanilla-looking Vue.js application that doesn't do anything that exciting. It just shows you that it's running. So I'm just going to install that now, and we'll deploy one of those. Yes, you can. Yep. Oops, not the node modules file. OK. So OK, so this has now been, uh, it's, it's built this very simple application that's Hello World. Another Hello World, but a bit more, bit more complex. So what I'm going to do here is do the same thing where I'm going to create another app. Sorry, another, another repo. So I'll call this one Go to Berlin View.
Great, so I've got my repo set up. And then back over here in Cloud9, usually there's a subfolder it creates. So I go to hello, but, but, hello Berlin. OK, that's all been set up. And now I'm just going to do the same thing again. I'm going to push this straight into the code commit repo. So back in code commit now, if I just refresh this page, you can see now we've got our view application. Again, it's nothing complicated, but it would work for any type of view application. So now over in Amplify Console, we're going to continue connecting this up. Again, I'll pick code commit and our view app. OK, and we're going to save and deploy that. Now, while this is building, I want to show you just very quickly the main configuration as well, because I think this is a really useful feature. So the builds, so under domain management, there's something really cool we can do here. This is your Amplify URL. And just like when you do it through CloudFront, you get something that's not very human readable. I have a domain I set up with Google Domains. So I'm going to create a domain name to point to this distribution. So all of my pet projects exist in here. So uh, if you ever want to have a good time, just have a look at what I've got registered. But, um, so let's call this go to. And we need to have an NS record. Now, back in AWS land, we need to set this up in Route 53. So before I configure this, I'll go to Route 53. And I have several projects there. So we'll call this go to and create my domain. OK, so th that gives me my DNS information. So I just have to do a one-time copy of this over to my DNS. Okay, and then now Google will um, set this up. And typically, this is a fairly fast process with Google domains. All of your providers have a similar sort of process, and they will take a, a different amount of time. So Google now will point my goto.jbez.dev domain over to Route 53, and now that's set up there. Now in Amplify Console, if we go back to our view application, which is now finished building, and I'll show you that quickly while we're here. So this is our view app that we built. And um, it's nothing too exciting, but it does show you a, t a typical kind of boilerplate view application. Now under domain management, I want to add this domain to this. So if I just go to add domain, and I want to select go to.jbez. Now, if this were a, a regular basic you know, mycompany.com domain, it will configure the www view as well, but we don't want that. We just want to have that one domain name there and hit Save. Now, this is really interesting. So in the background, it's going to go away and set up the SSL for us and configure all the certificates, set up the order renew policies. It gives you a 13-month um, Amazon uh, certificate. And then it'll go away and make sure your domain's configured. Now, because we're with Route 53, it's going to do the whole thing automatically. It knows that we have this registered. I'll come back to this in a little while, uh, so hopefully it's deployed, because it can take 20 or 30 minutes. But sometimes, if we're lucky, it can be much quicker. But that essentially is all there is to deploying a domain name. It's simply just pointing this in, setting it up here, and there's nothing else you have to do. So the next thing I wanted to show you, and we'll come back to this screen here, is there are a number of different getting started apps that are worth seeing as well. So if I just go to the Amplify site,
you can see that there's, a, there's a, a several uh, boilerplate different apps, the to-do app, the chat app, and so forth. The one I'm going to show you is this authentication starter. So I'm going to just click this here, deploy to console, connect to GitHub. We'll give it a name of uh, go to auth demo. I'm going to give it a role I set up earlier. This essentially is just an IAM uh, role that has the permissions to do this, and deploy. OK, and we'll come back to this in just a little while. Now, what's interesting about this demo is that this is not just a front-end app. It's going to launch some back-end pieces, too. So one of the painful things if you're a front-end developer is dealing with authentication, because you have lots of different choices. And there are some great services out there that can do a lot of things for you. Um, but you know, in AWS, we have Cognito. And setting up Cognito pools and identities is a kind of tenuous process. And you have to know lots of different things to make it work. So Amplify has an auth component that basically does all this for you and drops it in. And this demo application shows you how it's going to deploy that front end view application, or actually, it's a React application, along with the back end pieces needed for it to work. OK, so that's still building. I'm going to switch back to the other one just quickly to see if that's deployed yet. We're still waiting. OK. So just give that two minutes while that deploys. One other thing to mention here is that if you have a complex app, a mobile app or web app of some type, you're probably used to the fact that you have to make sure your website works for many different devices and tablets and desktops and all these other things. And it can be very difficult to make sure your site is responsive and looking the same way as you would expect. So it also offers previews in the build process. Sorry. Oh, sorry, these have been disabled. Where it would, it, because it's a simple app, it didn't do it. But it essentially, it takes screenshots where it runs the website against a series of different uh, tablets and phones to give you a render of what things look like. So for an example of this, one of the sessions I'm doing in reInvent has this complex view application that I deployed this way. And I was able to catch a bug because it, it found on a phone that I don't own a rendering problem. So these screenshots can help you find those sort of issues. I'll just see if the rendering is turned on in the others. No, unfortunately, it's disabled there. OK, so um, normally when that's enabled, that's kind of a useful tool if you're deploying an app and you're a front-end developer. OK, so going back to the one we just deployed, I'm now getting lots of tabs open. OK, this is still in the build process, but that's OK, because we we, I set one up earlier just in case this would take a while. And so this is the, exactly the same thing, but it was set up an hour ago. And so what it looks like is this. I already put a URL in front of this so I could show you uh, how the URL mapping works. And you can open your phone now and go to this if you want. The, um, the URL is berlin.jbez.dev. So this was exactly what we've just deployed, but deployed by me one hour ago, just in case the DNS didn't catch up in time. And this shows you a very simple auth component, where if I want to create an account, and I put in a, my details, this is my real phone number, by the way. So you know, call me if you have any questions. I'll just put in the auth code. OK, that's confirmed. And now if I log into this app, oh, wrong. so now I'm logged in. And you can see this is a basic React app. But now it's aware of the fact that I've logged in. So this component essentially adds um, auth capability directly to your application without you needing to do very much. Now, under the covers, you can obviously go in and change the UI and the look and feel. But the basic flow in the background, where it sends you an email or a text message as a, as a two-factor auth, is completely handled for you. So it's another very useful feature. So that is essentially the demo of, yes, yeah, sorry. Did you add 
So yes, so you've, the auth provider in Amplify only works with Cognito, but it, under the covers, you'll see it creates a number of different files that are relatively easy to modify to point to anybody who's using uh, JSON web tokens. So um, you know, one of my favorite providers is Auth0. I think they've got a really good flow. It's very easy to use. And so I, before I worked at AWS, we had lots of applications that were using Auth0 for authentication. And it found it very easy just to lift that into this and continue using Auth0 in exactly the same way. Yeah. OK, so that is essentially the whole of Amplify Console. It's extremely easy. And I was very excited to find this because uh, it was about a year ago I discovered this software. It makes it super easy to take an existing website, often that's just a flat or a spa, and create a, an action, actionable production website that's globally servable and gives you um, very high throughput, throughput through a CDN without any real work. Also, there's a very generous free tier on this program. So if you have just some basic websites with moderate amounts of tra traffic, you can run many different sites, often without it costing anything at all. So I recommend it a lot for developers. It's just super easy. and means we can focus on building websites and not the actual deployment process. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to take anything that um, you're thinking about. Yes, so Amplify Console, the naming's a little bit confusing because we've got Amplify, the piece that helps you uh, integrate back end pieces into your front end. But Amplify Console is just designed for the front end piece to be put into a, you know, in a production hosting environment. It really, if it, if it had a better name, it would be called Automatic Hosting. That's essentially what it is. OK, so let me just put this last slide up here. So this is my contact information. If you, I'm a developer advocate, so I'm really happy to answer any of your questions. If anything comes up, just contact me at jbezik at amazon.com or tweet me. If I don't come back to you quickly, it's because I'm on a plane somewhere. But usually, I try to find you an answer or at least connect you with somebody who does. I hope you find Amplify Console useful in your web production, and I hope you found this demo useful. Thanks ever so much for coming, and I hope you enjoy your rest of the day at the conference. <laughs>